Today, what I'm going to share with you is how to instantly or nearly instantly create your own financial model for a stock. It's super simple and uh, be able to create your own valuation for that stock. I'm Bradford Ferguson with Halter Ferguson Financial. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, I am an investment advisor. This is not financial advice. Reason that I'm sharing this with you today is so you can um, create your own numbers and if you don't have a number for an investment, uh, whether it's a stock or real estate or whatever, you, you need to have a number that you can hang your hat on. Um, the stock market's going to vary quite rapidly on a daily basis and test our emotions. But if you do the valuation work, what I find is that it's much easier to be a long-term investor. So what I'm going to do is... Um, let me share my Excel. I'm going to back out a second here. This is our disclaimer. Okay. This is going to be so simple, you're going to want to fight it. Okay. <laughs> um, this is based off of uh, I cannot enough, I cannot underscore enough projections um, that he's sharing on YouTube and Twitter. This is James Stevenson. Uh, his is for entertainment purposes only. It's not financial advice. Um, encourage you to make your own numbers. Um, the reason why we invest in anything, whether it's a company or real estate or even loan our money out, is for future profits. And um, if there's no future profits, there's <laughs> not a good reason to invest in something. Um, as an owner, all you really care about is future profits. So if you're investing in something where there are no future profits, then you should probably uh, find something else to invest in, a better use of your money. Um, but you have to be able to accept the ups and downs that come with it. So I'm going to plug in uh, James' numbers for 2023 and 2024. This is just for entertainment for illustrative purposes. And these are in billions of dollars. So in, in James, uh, one of James's uh, more recent videos, he shared that um, he thinks that in 2023, Tesla will have $41 billion in non-GAAP earnings in 2023 and 82 billion in 2024. So we're gonna use that as our base to work off of and we're gonna keep this really simple. Um, and what, what you need to do, cause you're investing today, you're taking cash today and putting it into an investment um, or taking away from an investment or choosing not to invest. <laughs> Again, this is not financial advice. So um, we need to bring all the future values back to today. So we'll be doing that. So um, there's a discounted value um, we'll call this a discounted cash flow here. And then, um, then we're going to add everything together. So what we, the first thing we need to do is forecast out profits, um, for Tesla based off of James, uh, projections. And what's interesting about his projection is he has Tesla still doubling their earnings in 2024 versus 2023. Uh, that's that would be pretty massive if it happened. Um, so what I'm going to do just to begin to add some conservatism, some reversion to the mean is um, we're going to take the amount that he's doing and only uh, multiply it by 75% uh, the next year. So you're going to take uh, 1.75 by the previous value. And then after that, we're gonna multiply it by um, 50%. And we're gonna assume that Tesla grows their profits by 50% moving forward for a number of years and then declining to uh, 40 and 30%. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're going to take uh, this previous year and multiply it by 50% for a couple of years. And then we're going to 
we're going to lower that down to 40 percent these are getting to be pretty darn big numbers and that's you know a sign of uh, what the potential risk may be in the investment um, and it could actually surprise the upside as well so there could be downside surprise it could be upside um, then we're going to multiply it by 30 percent uh, tesla themselves have said they uh, intend to grow units by uh, 50 percent for a long time to come uh, not all these units will be compact but they they will have some uh, we'll have some lower profits at some point from some units. Um, they are uh, swimming in Model Y right now. And then this last year, we're just gonna do 20% growth. And what I'm doing is showing you how um, to make the, the most simplest form of a discounted cash flow model. And I'm just gonna format this, add, add uh, some dollar signs, add some commas, Okay, and we'll, we'll do that for negative numbers. We don't have negative numbers in here. Um, and then what, what you assume on a, on a go forward basis is that they, um, they t will grow their earnings afterwards. Um, so I'll just make it very simplistic and um, we'll, um, we'll divide this uh, final amount um, by, um, let's call it, you can either discount it at 10% or at, um, or, or a different amount, but we'll do 10% for now. So we'll divide by 0.1. So, um, that's kind of how you, um, you value it. And then for the discounted cash flow, we need to bring all these future profits back to, um, the present, because the present is when we're making an investment decision or not making an investment decision. Um, so next year is still pretty close to now. So we're not actually going to discount that. Then the next year, uh, 2024, we're going to discount this by 10%. Um, so we're going to take 10% and um, we're, we're going to divide this by, uh, we're going to discount by 10%. So you divide by 1.1. So um, if, it, if you're divide, div, um, using zero as a discount rate, you just be dividing by one. So you see already the this profit number drops to um, $74. And I'm going to format this again so we don't get decimals just to make it easier so the numbers are big on the screen. Uh, we'll keep the dollar, dollar sign there. Uh, so <laughs> pardon me a moment, I bear with me a sec. So we, we don't want a currency symbol here. And we don't want commas on the years. Uh, okay, all right. Then, um, then the next year on 2025, we need a discount by uh, two years, 10% for two years. So you take the previous year or you take this year and then you uh, divide it by um, 1.1 to the second power. So you're dividing it twice by 1.1. And um, so you're discounting at two years. And then I'm going to try and see how smart Excel is and see if that formula were carry out. Um, no, it didn't do it. So we'll just do that real quick. Uh, there's probably a faster way. I know there's some super smart people in Excel. I definitely could do better, uh, but let's go ahead and do that. So um, we're just going to copy this formula over and um, copy it over a bunch of times and just, just change the number. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Figure out this keyboard. So um, we've already discounted it twice a second time. So this one needs to be three times. And then we'll just move over to the next one. It's going to be four. And go five. So interest is compounding and discount is discounting is compounding. Um, so it depending on, oh, I need to plug in my battery. Thanks for bearing with me. We're almost done actually. <laughs> um, get plugged in so my computer doesn't give me the boot. Okay. Um, so we did six, we did seven, eight, nine. This one's going to be 10. So we're discounting this value back to the present. So um, when you you have all the discounted values of these earnings. So the if you use 10% as your discount rate, and maybe that discount rate is too low, um, some Wall Street people use 13% um, or whatever for Tesla, um, but we're using 10% today. Um, when you discount the, the earnings in 2030 and um, let's say it's a trillion, which would be pretty high, but we're, this is just an illustration. Um, in today's money, that would be worth uh, $522 billion at a 10% discount rate. So that's why we're doing this. And then all we need to do to finish up, let me see if I can change my view a little bit. Um, all we need to do is to sum all these up. So we're, um, the discount rate is in C4, or the discounted cash flows are in C4. So we're gonna do sum C4 to M4. And uh, it looks like less than 10 minutes, we have a, a discounted cash flow uh, valuation for Tesla, um, showing a valuation uh, in today's dollars of 9.8, to six billion, uh, trillion uh, with these assumptions. And this is at like as simple as you could get it. Uh, what you can do is you could change uh, some of the values. You think these values are too aggressive. Uh, that's, that's an easy way to do it, um, to do evaluation is take someone's numbers and then modify them. So I'm saying, okay, James, um, 2024, looks too aggressive. I'm just um, I'm just uh, being a, a little more conservative than what, what James is being. I'm like cutting in half. Um, I'm not saying this is James valuation either. Um, so when we cut that a dollar amount in half, essentially um, all the profits moving forward from there are getting cut in half in the assumptions. Um, and that final valuation is getting cut in half. So, so here, um, saying that uh, today, uh, with these assumptions um, about profits for Tesla, um, 4.5 trillion. Um, so this is how you make a quick and super simple discounted cash flow for any company. Um, the reason why you invest in any company is for their future profits. If they're not profitable, um, if they're negatives, you need to put negative numbers for the future years. Uh, certainly there's risk in um, making assumptions off of these valuations, but you know, once you have a valuation for yourself, whether it's um, 1 trillion, 5 trillion or 10 or half a trillion or zero, um, then that can help you make uh, investment decisions uh, from that. 
Uh, and you can make this a lot more complicated and granular. Um, one, one of the things that I love about James Stevenson's um, YouTube site, um, YouTube channel is he's taking us through his whole spreadsheet and it's very granular and he tries to learn how he projects everything moving forward. Um, so what you could do more from a, a model like I just presented, it, and what I presented is not my model. It's not my view on Tesla, okay? <laughs> and you need to put in your own numbers. Um, so don't just take someone else's numbers and then discount them. You need to create your own. Um, but the beauty of it is um, it, it gives you something to hang your hat on. And when the market's going up or down and there's a lot of drama about the company and maybe you have a temporary hiccup in the, in the prospects of the company during a quarter, if, if the factory shut down for some uh, bizarre reason or whatever, um, you can look forward and, and try and figure out, okay, where do I think things go from here? So certainly growth rate and earnings is a big assumption. Um, from what I just presented. Um, you can also do a model where you look at how, excuse me, how profitable Tesla is per car. And then you can project uh, the number of deliveries uh, that Tesla has moving forward. You can add other sources of profitability like their energy business where they're selling batteries. You can add RoboTaxi, you can add Tesla bot to that. Um, but you see from James's um, earnings projections that the valuation that you come up with is already um, pretty high. Just um, and and I I'm not sure like how much Tesla bought, how much um, how much Robo Taxi he's putting in there. I don't think he's doing Tesla bought in 2024. So um, just want to share this with you and encourage you to. Uh, open an Excel spreadsheet uh, at the very top, put the years, and then the next row over, uh, put what you think the profits may be. Um, if you don't wanna jump to the profits and you instead wanna um, look at deliveries and then go and then add like profits per delivery and then multiply it out to the total profits and you, you gotta take away taxes and other things like that. Um, you can go from there. So it's it's choose your own adventure with your models. And um, anyhow, it's been good talking with you and bye for now. See ya.